Okay, so this is just going to be a little bit closer <clears throat> look at uh, the adapters and how the tracks are mounted. So, let's see. If you look at the tracks, the tracks have not been altered at all. These come straight off of a Can-Am. So they're just a Can-Am Apache 360. And uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure... I can't remember the name of them, but they're identical to something else other than the bolt pattern. Um, their Can-Am has their track made by uh, Tattoo or, or some company that makes a lot of them for razors and everything. The only difference is Can-Am specific is their bolt pattern. And it, to me, it looks like this could even be replaced. You could get one for whatever you wanted. Um, so just because it says Can-Am on the back, doesn't mean that it's Can-Am. Uh, someone else built it for them. But these are the adapters. So we've just got the wheel studs coming out and they go into a slot inside so they don't turn. And then, yeah, into a five bolt on the back. So that's where the adapters are different. Most adapters have your studs on your tractor go into this plate and then this bolts to that plate. Well, this, I needed studs going both directions. So uh, that's where this one is different than a normal adapter. And that's why it was just a little bit expensive. But they worked out really good. So you can see them in there. And, uh, but I mean, when you're talking expensive, I mean, you're, you're buying a set of tracks that most tracks are $4,000. These things were under a grand for all four of them. Obviously, you only end up using two, but... Then you can make something else with the other two, I guess. But I just figured I'd show a better close-up view of this. Oh, the only other thing I had to do was take the hub off right here and flip it around. There is a ring right here. And this ring is what your original rim rests on uh, for strength and stability to make sure it's centered on the hub. Uh, unfortunately, the adapter are not that big the hole in the center of the adapter you can see the hole in the center of this adapter was not big enough to go around that so all i did was take this hub it's perfectly centered you just take it flip it around put it back on and now instead of this ring it has i don't know if you can see it in there but there is a just a it's just ramped up you can see it just ramps up and it fits perfectly flat against the hub so that this runs straight and true because if there is any wobble in this it's only going to get exaggerated when you come back to the back of the track you got to make you got your well you don't have to i guess you could wobble you could drive around with a wobbly track but it's just not going to track straight and it's definitely going to be a lot more vibration than it already is and if you think this is going to be a smooth ride if you're if you're wanting to do this other than the fact that it's just cool, if you want a smooth ride, do not do this. This is one of the roughest things I've ever driven in. It's because these tracks, these tracks are a good two inches deep. So uh, every time you come over that on the ground, this is what you're rough. Everybody thinks they're going to be smooth, but every time one of these lugs hits one of these bogey wheels, you feel it. And then you have four bogey wheels. All running on the ground so you got four vibrations every <laughs> every inch and it uh, it is not smooth at all but it has a crap ton of traction so if you want to do it because it's cool that's great do not do do it if you want a smooth ride keep the wheels on it and just put bigger wheels like I had on it in the beginning but uh, yeah it is definitely cool so i'll go ahead and put that other track on
that's it tracks are on and looking pretty good